you for taking time out from your busy schedules of purchasing artworks. Um, uh, this is the title of my very short talk that uh, kind of is uh, culled from my latest book, Bloomin, which is part of the Forest and Field series. And just as a matter of information, the, the way I looked at that, that book project was that each volume would explore a genre of photography and sort of undermine that genre in the same time. So when I started looking at these flower pictures, which are not usually the square, so keep in mind that there's something kind of funky happening on that screen. Um, when I started working with flowers and still lives, I thought about how I had arranged people in photographs and that so many of my portraits were very much a combination of my impressions of people, my projections of people, and that they were in fact moved, prodded, costumed, um, and essentially like an arrangement of flowers. Um, this is part of a series of shadow pictures, not based on Lee Friedlander, but um, when I look at this picture, I do sort of think about him a bit. Um, I guess for me this picture is the picture that says I'm an artist and I'm making work. Um, but it, it, it takes place on a terrace in Germany that um, I either interact with or I photograph things that have been left on it. So some things I actually make and then other things I find that seem as though they've been made. And I think that as someone that never really studied art history, um, I, sort of, I sort of noticed the idea of what things were meant to look like, that uh, perhaps history of painting really took from what was naturally laying around. And I kind of got excited at the idea of, of vacillating between really altering nature and then just kind of finding it as it is. This is uh, from a series of flower pictures where I just had this idea once that I wanted to make flowers based on Robert Maplethorpe, but I wasn't interested in his flower pictures, I was interested in his bondage pictures. And I wanted to make pictures of nature that felt as fraught as a captured person. So. My routine is that I, I go steal flowers from people's gardens in Germany and I drive them up to a vista. Um, and then I put sticks in the ground and I tie flowers on strings and I throw them up in the air and they're dying and I have to take it in five minutes and um, what it is, it is. And when I'm not with the flowers, then I'm on the terrace kind of playing with potatoes and. For some reason, every time I look at a potato, I think about an artwork. I think for me, the idea that somebody else has arranged something, not to be photographed, but to be pleasing to their eye. Um, there's so many decisions that people make in their domestic space. And the idea of kind of following around somebody, in this case, my sister-in-law, um, and documenting what she thinks looks good or what she likes being with. It's kind of exciting. This is the only picture actually made out of Germany. I made it in Majorca when I went on vacation. And I kind of thought it was appropriate to have a Majorca picture as a German artist, because that's where Germans go. And also they have really nice flowers in Majorca and I was getting tired of the German ones. This wasn't really a flower picture, but when I turned it upside down, it seemed like it. Um, it's a paratrooper, special forces paratrooper in Germany. And I was seriously told if I showed his face, they would have to kill me. Um, I'm not sure if I really believe that, but because I don't think the German army is really allowed to be proactive like that. But, but I like the idea for me of, of really kind of showing how much we move a body in portraiture, or at least for me, that, uh, that portraiture is really about my expectations of somebody and in a way my trying to 
kind of take possession of their body, like move into a shell that's been left and, and move it in a certain way. This is a really early flower picture. I sort of had this idea that I could take these flowers to a place that normally I would have taken a young person. You know, I would take a kid up to the top of a mountain and, and I would photograph them in such a way that I felt that the landscape would illustrate their history or illustrate the predicament of their nationality. And so I wanted to take flowers which seem so passive and so beautiful and put them in a, in a, in a, in a place that each photograph would have its own weather, its own temperament, so that it wasn't just the same background for the flowers, that each flower combination sort of had a different, different feeling. This I did not realize said me until I saw the, the contact sheets. It said something else German, but um, a little bit of narcissism is good. I like the idea too that um, it was always, I think, uh, difficult for people to understand my relationship to the romanticism in the work because of either gender or nationality or uh, personal history, being Jewish and photographing in Germany. And there's something about photographing flowers that allows you to be romantic and allows you to embrace beauty in a way that doesn't reflect you so that I guess my hope was that um, there would be an anonymity that would allow people to kind of inform the pictures and the poetics themselves. Just love those shadows. But these pictures would not be possible without a digital uh, point and shoot camera because the, anytime I tried to make them with a, a bigger camera, just didn't, didn't have that distance from my eye. This is my great nephew, Lucas, arranging a cactus. I think I also really like the idea of kind of stealing flowers and kind of going into yards and places that weren't my own. As a number of times I got chased out by farmers and, you know, who would yell, like, you're bringing sticks and flowers into my giant, you know, wilderness. So it's kind of polluting. Like, I was, like, repatriating these things back to a, a natural environment, but they didn't see it that way. I think also once you... You know, for me, the interesting thing was once I decided that I was interested in tableau and I was interested in arrangement, I saw everything in a different way. Um, everything sort of became beautiful and um, kind of meaningful, and the way in which anyone would place anything became a valid expression. This was actually like a really disastrous day where I tied everything up and it started raining. Um, and in the end, of course, like it's nice to have a little rain. I, I think for me, um, the temperament of the pictures is so important. The idea that I could tie flowers up for the rest of my life is really boring. So it's sort of only interesting if it's different. So this is some very strange little sanitation hut in the town that that I'm in, and I saw that someone had graffitied Jupiter on it, and I thought, there's one other person in this little town that thinks it's really strange, like I do. It's like another world. This is when I went to Berlin for a short amount of time. I usually don't leave Schwäbischmund because if I do, then I really know I'm not from Germany. And that was the case when I went to Berlin. But this is the Olympic Stadium. So I think that this is one of the last portraits I took this summer, and I, <clears throat> I sort of don't photograph people that much anymore, especially strangers. But when I saw this kid on, on crutches, and I, I just had hip surgery myself, so I, I felt a real affinity. But when I saw him, I thought about how 
And there was a time in Germany where every old man missing a leg was a Nazi. And it's like all I could see was these sort of, you know, aged veterans. And when I photographed this boy, I felt like I was sort of turning him into, into one of these people or, or that I was actually seeing it from its original time period. But then ultimately he's just kind of a, you know, blonde boy on crutches. This is one of my sister-in-law's arrangements, which, you know, it's one of those things where I don't really have an interest in picking a certain kind of flower and putting it in a vase. And I never saw, again, an arrangement like this that I liked. Um, but I love the idea of, of documenting someone else's little attention to beauty. I think that's the end of my slideshow. So if anyone has any questions about horticulture, um, I can't answer them because I'm not really actually a big fan of flowers. But I do like making pictures of them. Was that? That wasn't a half an hour, was it? I was so worried about running over that uh, I might have shortchanged you. Come on, someone ask a question. Peter. Can you say more about um, your print process? I know some of, some of the prints are inkjet prints. I don't know if they all are, <clears throat> but I'd love to hear um, you talk about that. Yeah, I more. think probably for this series, they all will be inkjet. Um, because there's something, yeah, I haven't really decided yet how I feel with that process and skin. I think I'm, yeah, I have to get used to that. Um, but there's something not painterly about the pictures, but the fact that they're kind of photographs of sculptures. I like the idea of there being photographs of sculptures and then they become prints, you know, more like silk screens or something like that, that they kind of keep on transcending what they're supposed to be because they're very much the, you know, the flower pictures, I make them and then I leave them. So they're sort of by the side of the road, unless I really need the sticks. Sometimes the sticks I can't live without because it's hard to get a good stick. Um, but I like the idea that they sort of stand there like this kind of site-specific installation. And I think it has a lot to do with um, when I was very early on in the town, Giannis Kunelis did an installation in our town. And it really pissed off the people in the town and they hacked it and finally set it on fire and cut it down. So it had this like very violent kind of like, I couldn't believe that this town had such a great artwork. And then the people kind of like, you know, in Frankenstein with the pitchforks, cut it down. And so I kind of feel like I'm bringing that piece back and I'm putting it all over the countryside. So it is a sculpture. So then somehow making something that feels like it has a slightly more layers to it with the inkjet just feels richer and it lasts longer. And it's more expensive, which in this economy just really cheers the gallery up. It's like ridiculously expensive, comparatively. Uh, Collier, yes. Mark, Mark Mayer. Um, when I think about your work, I think about Marsden Hartley spending time in Nova Scotia with uh, an Acadian family up there. When you spend time in Germany, there seems to be an interesting parallel there. Uh, is that just happenstance, or do you think about Marsden Hartley sometimes? You know, I never think about Mars and Hartley, but I never thought about Proust. And right now I'm thinking about the audacity of description. Um, so I will look up Hartley. I, I think that, you know, for me it was really clear that if I wanted to make photographs, I couldn't make them in New York. Um, and Germany seemed like a place where so many photographs had been made. But when I went there, it didn't seem like my pictures had been made. It, it was like... Uh, it, it was though I was in a different Germany and I was seeing different things and I was experiencing it. It was only because I was so different than a German. Um, so I sort of see myself as culturally formed from a history of exile and then kind of returning to Germany, you know, in a way that say someone like George Gross couldn't, um, all those artists that left Germany, you know, during before the war. So there's something to being someplace else. It gives you a sense of entitlement that you can make anything you want, and it also gives you a strange sense of invisibility. Like, nobody really knows you. You don't belong there. 
and you just kind of move about your business. And Germany is a really easy country to take over because they're kind of like, you know, they don't really say anything. So you can kind of, I can go about my business, I can redefine it, I can steal it, I can, you know, um, represent it, and they don't, they don't really kick up with too much of a fuss. But, but I think that there is something, you know, one of my favorite writers was um, James Baldwin when I was in high school. And I think the idea of feeling a certain freedom when you go someplace else, even if that freedom doesn't exist for the people in that country, it exists for you because you're free of where you're from. Ava Respini. Uh, you mentioned that this book, you saw this book as a study on, on a genre and that it would be one volume of many. I'm curious to hear about the other genres that you're interested in exploring. Okay. Well, I actually know because I talked myself into uh, Andrew Roth's upcoming books on series because I said I was doing a series and I should be in the book. And he said, well, how many do you have? I said, well, I have one done and one coming out and I know the other one. So um, Bloomin' is the second one. The first one was Neighbors which was portraiture, um, bloom in his arrangements, flowers, memories of the administration, um, which is one third done, is about reportage photography. So it's, you know, I have like an obsessive collection of fake military pictures. And then I've gone over the years to actual military installations and kids that I've dressed up in costumes have then gone into the army. So. I have pictures of them as fake soldiers and then pictures of them as real soldiers. So I kind of, you know, I made most of that work in a time when I didn't feel, you know, my country wasn't at war. I didn't feel like war was paramount in, in the news. And at some point, obviously, it became much more, uh, reportage photography became very prevalent. And I was looking at it every day. And so the book is kind of an exercise in, um, in a way, challenging my fantasies about that kind of work, like um, addressing our desire, like, th like the idea of the notion to have a favorite war movie. You know, when someone says, well, Apocalypse Now is my favorite war movie, Platoon is my favorite war movie, what does that mean? What does it mean to love photographs from like Larry Burroughs? And um, so the, I just kind of really, it's a lot of collage and um, a bit of appropriated things to make a kind of book that says there's all these administrations and there's all these wars and the experience of being in them is so similar and the people that are in them are so similar and similar ages um, so the book is kind of a collection of historical moments and my desire to insert myself and also you know the complete impossibility of me ever going someplace remotely dangerous so it's, it's a bit self-incrimination, the book. And then um, there's going to be a volume on um, teenage love that will be uh, pictures that I did of two young girls in love uh, in Germany in the 90s. But that's coming out like the last one because it took me like 10 years to get past like the whole gay photography thing. So I got to wait until I'm like really old and I don't care anymore. Um, <laughs> and then there's going to be probably a a volume on sports and um, kind of based on Lenny Riefenstahl's Olympia and then probably one on um, the workspace like workers and factories and then probably I'll be really sick of Germany and I'll come back to America <laughs> but it is it, you know I think that um, if photography has one thing above the other mediums it's books you know, painters, like, they don't have to spend a lot on their work, and they don't have to frame it, and everyone loves painting. Um, I, I had a show in Berlin in September, and the first thing that sold was the one painting I made, and it sold in, like, the first five minutes. So I really came face to face with that reality. But photography has books, and, and no one else can touch us with that. And as someone who's always really loved books, I, I really wanted to... to have my practice become informed by making books. That it wasn't like I would make a show and then I would make a book. It was more like I would work on a book for years and really get to know that work. And it's changed a lot how I make shows, I think, definitely in a better way. Because when you make a book, 
It's not like your publisher says, well, you can't put that picture in because it's too expensive, we can't sell it, or can't put that picture in because no one would want to buy it. Um, you know, the only thing is this picture of the little boy, I, I had a different version where you don't really see his genitalia, which I didn't have to do, but in a way, I think the book is so poetic and the idea that something is hidden worked, but there, there aren't the same amount of restrictions on a book. I think when a publisher asks you to do a book, they let you do whatever you want to do. And when a gallery asks you to do a show, they give you a ton of freedom, but they don't give you ultimate freedom. It's, it is a collaboration to some level. Hello. Hey. Um, I was wondering what led you to choose Germany to do your work there. Sorry, say that again? Why did you choose to do, to do your work in Germany? Well, I think, you know, one of the things was, um, at the time, 303 Gallery was showing Andreas Gursky and Thomas Roof. And so I was around that work and really excited by it. And so I started looking into history and looking at August Sander and the Beckers. And um, I guess it seemed like, in a, in a way, like a huge departure from identity politics and uh, post-feminism and things I had been interested in in school. So I really went to Germany because it seemed like a place that you could make pictures. Um, and, but I didn't start making pictures until I had this really strange experience where I was waiting on this bus and we were going past an intersection and the bus stopped. And I had seen this yellow house with writing on it for, you know, for days and it said the Johann Franz. Uh, I later found out that was like a house for asylum seekers. But anyway, when the bus stopped, two signs, street signs, lined up in such a way that Johann Franz became Anne Fran. And I thought, oh my God, it's Anne Frank's house, and she's still alive. And nobody knows it but me. And, and I realized that nobody on the bus, nobody in the town, had probably ever seen that. But every day you could see that if the bus stopped in a certain way. And I started to think, you know, in a, in a bit of a narcissistic way, like, well, what if, like, Gursky and Struth and Ruth and the Beckers, what if they missed some pictures? Like, what if there are pictures here that they just didn't see? Maybe they were right in front of them, or pictures that they didn't want to see. Um, so for me, I went to Germany because I love the history of German photography, but I really feel like it doesn't tell the whole story. And I really feel that if I don't tell it, nobody will. And that's, like, a really kind of, you know, uh, bold statement, but after being there and shooting for 18 years, I really feel like it's my place to shoot in, and, um, you know, I, I, I see it kind of a bit like Thomas DeMond, like that, that both of us are sort of working off that inheritance. We're going in very different directions, but we're not satisfied to sort of present a certain kind of Germany. Um, and, you know, I mean, people can totally argue with me, but I think it, like a lot of that stuff is really fascist looking, and I think that it, it, it creates the same sense of kind of German pride and regularity um, and perfection that got Germany into a lot of trouble. So like I, you know, I always see every ghost possible, I see, you know, because I'm looking. If you're not looking, you don't see it. But um, yeah, I'm always looking. So that seemed like a place full of predicaments to exploit. So there's only five minutes left. I don't know if I can uh, alienate any big fans of German photography out in the audience, but um, yeah. How long did the flower series take you to do any, um, if it's complete? Yeah, I think, well, that's the, that's the kind of, you know, the only problem with books is that you kind of feel like, oh, so now the book's done. Um, and there's a serious pain in making a picture that could have been in a book that's, that's not. But luckily for me, like a flower picture can easily be in, say, a re reportage book because it's a memorial. Or I can, you know, I, I often can reorder the pictures. But I think I took the first flower picture probably in 2005 and... I made just one actually legitimate stringed flower pictures this last summer. I did more of the shadow stuff. It, it, I'm not sure that I can say I can say anything else with them. I'll probably make one every once in a while just like for fun. But uh, you know, they're really—it's the kind of thing. If I if I if I find a kid at the pool 
and I got to like speak to him in German and I got to ask him this perverted question of can I take your picture and I got to call his mother and I got to pick him up and I got to bring him to the house and then I have to make my camera work and the lights work and the flash go off and you know and my head is spinning and I feel so stressed out and I think oh I just want to photograph flowers because I don't have to talk to them I don't have to impress them but they're dying as I'm doing it I mean they're like literally falling off the strings the wind is blowing the sticks down it's you know, it's so kind of, it's such a, a physical um, interaction. So, you know, there's something about shadows that's really, really appealing right now. And also, I completely screwed up my hip taking those flower pictures. So, um, I'm sort of a bit on hiatus because I'm not supposed to crouch for a year, um, which is hard. But, uh, you know, I, I shot a lot of them. And... And I think that I have like a bunch. So I actually would love, you know, one day for someone to say, I have an amazing garden, come to my house. And, you know, instead of someone saying, come photograph my kids, someone say, come, you know, do a picture of flowers in, in my space. But I think it's, for now, it feels like, well, it's winter. So there's no flower pictures in the winter. But I probably will, I, I want to really kind of start doing more tabletop stuff. Um, I was really influenced by the Mirandi show last year, um, in particular a kind of upside down cactus picture, so I want to try and make that. Well, I just want to thank everyone. Some people came all the way from New York just to see this talk, so thank you very much.